Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen, and this is Hard Rock University, and uh, I've been doing some research on this Keen Hydromatic jig here, trying to improve the recoveries. I've made a fair amount of progress, but I need to do some testing right now, and uh, this I'll even need some help. Eva, my long-suffering and very patient wife here, will be doing the uh, uh, timing and observation while I'm manually cranking the shaft here. I'm experimenting with the stroke and frequency of the oscillation to try and optimize the fluidization of the charge. I've made uh, a couple custom drive shafts here. Um, this one gives you a total one inch throw. The original factory shaft gave a half inch throw which when you get all the slop and everything else is actually only giving you about a quarter inch to three-eighths of an inch oscillation in the tub. The one I've got in place now has a one inch offset which means it's got an actual two inch throw back and forth. I've fabric cobbled a little uh, nut on the end of both of these so I can put a hand crank on it and turn it by hand so I can change the frequency very simply. The engine with the smallest pulley I can find and the largest pulley for the shaft that's readily available which is 14 inches. So I go from about an inch and three quarter pulley to a 14 inch pulley. It's still I think going too fast for what I want. So I had to come up with a way to go slower. Okay so this string is suspended across here and it basically it locates a position that's repeatable the hammer can slide in this loop. When I start oscillating it, it can sink in, and we're going to measure how long it takes to sink this far under various conditions. So first I've turned the pump on to fill it all with water. And we're going to start with basically one rotation per second, 60 RPM. And I'm going to do this approximately, but we can double check later from the stopwatch. Go! 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 8, 1009, 1010, 1013, 1014, 1015, 1016, 1017, 1019, 1020, 1020, Okay. Whatever's your review point, okay. What did you get? 31.2. 31.2 seconds at one rotation per second. Do a pack reset, and a good. Now I'm gonna do it basically two cycles per second. Give me a go. Go! 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009. Okay. 11.6 seconds. 11.6 seconds. So clearly, we've got substantially better fluidization. Let's see if going faster makes it even better. Remember, this is a two inch stroke. And I won't be able to do this real precisely, but we can check it on the video later and get a good number. Let me know when you're ready. Go! 1001, 1002, 1003. Stop. What do you got? 5.7 seconds. 5.7 seconds. There comes a point where it just gets violent and stuff is splashing everywhere. That's what I was seeing with the motor. And so before I spend like $200 on another pulley, I'd like to know if that pulley is going to do me any good. So now I'm just going to go kind of as fast as I can. Give me a good start. Go! And what was that 
last one? Before this one? Five point six. Okay. I believe it was. So it's a little more fluidized, which is good. But the question is, is it something? Are we starting to get too much agitation? So let me just look at it. And that's not as bad as it was doing with the motor. I think I could live with about that much agitation. Now, let me change shafts. And we'll go to the one inch total throw. Well, I've now changed out this shaft, which had a one inch offset, to one with a half inch offset. So this had two inches of throw. This one now has one inch of throw. I've put the pulley back on because when I'm done with the hand cranks, I'll take off the hand crank, put the pulley back on, I mean, put the drive belt on, and test it with the motor. go. Okay, now we're going to try one cycle per second, or one 60 RPM. Go! 1001, Okay, how many? 18.6. 18 18.6 seconds. Excuse me. 120 RPM. Ready? Go. 1001. Stop! Okay. How much? 8.4. 8.4 seconds. Now I'm going to do it, trying for about 180 RPM. Go! Stop! Okay, how much? 8.0. 8.0. Clearly that's less, I mean that, that's more than the same thing on the last one. Okay, now I'm going to shake it as fast as I can. Give me a go. Go! Stop! Okay. 4.1. Okay. Now, go ahead and leave the pump on. It will only take me a moment to, uh, Change the thing. Let me. Ready? Yep. There you go. Just go, I'll hit it. You can see at a reasonable engine speed it can get pretty radical 
at that gear reduction. So that's why I wanted to see, in order to reduce it anymore, I'm going to have to get complicated. You know, with, a, with an 18 inch wheel, I'm talking 200 bucks, got to cut some steel out, change the belt, it's going to get unpleasant. So I wanted to test it first. Um, at the low speed, with this stroke, and the modifications I made inside here to the water distribution system and such, I was getting some pretty darn good recovery. I'm getting much better fluidization than I was in the other one. As a matter of fact, let me just fire this up and I'll show you how easy my hand goes in compared to what I did on the previous video. If you remember the previous video, it didn't go, it wasn't nearly that fluid. I can also add more water to it. Right now I'm running off of one pump. I did notice that adding more water does give more fluidization, but I'm afraid it might also be floating off some of the microfine gold. Uh, I haven't tested that part of it, but I'm getting pretty good fluidization with just this amount of water, so I'm not too worried. Increased the stroke. I doubled the factory stroke on this from a half inch to one inch. And it's a pretty simple system. In the original factory model, this bearing was here. The shaft goes all the way across and they had an eccentric on the shaft with a much bigger bearing here so that it could slide on and off and be replaced. There's nothing wrong with that, but it kind of limited how much of a throw you could get. So, I changed the bearing to this side. I had to put in this piece of steel here. To get a bigger wheel, I'm going to have to move those bearings back a little. And then I'm probably going to hit this piece of steel with the belt, so I'm going to have to cut a chunk of that out, which means I'm going to have to weld a piece of steel in here to brace it. On a positive note though, I can also swap the engine 180 degrees and put it over here for better balance, you know, when you're when you're moving it. But uh, that's not a, a major thing. The main thing is this chunk of steel's in the way of this belt with a bigger pulley setting closer here, I'm I'm thinking. Plus that pulley there is 14 inch, I don't know, die cast or aluminum or something. And they run, you know, like 25 to 35 bucks. To go to an 18 inch wheel, I got to go to cast iron with a replaceable hub. That's going to run like 150 to 300 dollars, depending upon where I buy it. Luckily, I got a place real close by that's really cheap. Like that one inch bearing right there is 14 bucks. <laughs> so that's the result. The Longer stroke seems to work better, but you got to slow it down to keep it from getting just ridiculous on you. So once I figure out what to do there and how to reduce that, I can actually do some production testing and see how well it worked. But I'm kind of at the upper end of the RPMs for what I need to be doing. So, from Keith and Eva, happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.